Earlier today, Marjorie Egan and I spoke with Mayor uh, Marty Walsh of Boston about this whole situation. We asked him why the video hadn't been made public earlier, at least, or at least viewed by a journalist or two. Here's how the mayor responded. I'm going to leave that up to Commissioner Evans to, to make this determination on that. I think some, some of those meetings happen to, to have conversations, private conversations, without having it all over the, all over the world. And, and I think that in some cases people say, well, transparency, you know, everyone throws the word transparency around pretty loosely. Uh, and when it comes to the city of Boston, they, they expect us to be very specific on it. Uh, and I think in, in a case like that, I think it's important to, to, to let the leaders know exactly what's going on so they can fully understand it and put their arms around it and have, a, have an open conversation around the dialogue. And then and then you open up. And again, if, if it goes out to the media in that particular case, uh, before the family sees it, I, I honestly think the family, uh, in some cases, need to be able to see this video so they can understand fully what's going on. And, and, and in this particular case, this is an ongoing uh, open investigation still with the U.S. Attorney's Office and, and, uh, and, and, and um, the city of Boston, the counterterrorism unit. Joining me now is the man about whom the mayor was speaking, Boston Police Commissioner William Evans. Commissioner, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. He's speaking for you when he explained why you didn't release the video earlier, why community leaders, the family, and then several days later until the public could see? Yeah, obviously we have concerns. We have a lot of respect for the family. They had just lost a loved one, and, you know, we don't know uh, also whether, you know, the, all the next of kin has been notified. There's a lot of issues. There's witnesses. We don't want to influence um, what they, when they're interviewed, mm -hmm. might see. Uh, so there's a lot of issues to go in on the timing of it, you know. But immediately we go to the community and a selected few to take the message out. Uh, his oldest brother, uh, Imam Ibrahim Rahim, just said a minute ago there was another half, to, he didn't say half, another portion of the video that came before that which was released today. Why didn't the public get to see the whole thing? G Jim, I've seen the video as much as him. I, I mean, it, it might show him walking longer in the parking lot, but there's nothing hidden. Everything they've seen today um, is all we have. So, you know, I, I heard the video. I, I don't really don't know what he's talking about. Uh, except maybe walking longer in the park a lot, uh, where nothing really happens, it just picks up. But there is an earlier part of the video, even if you v feel there isn't anything be, that's there relevant. There might be like f f three seconds earlier that just shows the path he took, but there's no interaction until the officers come out of the car, so I don't know what impact that would have. Well, Jim. one of the things, Commissioner, he did say is that unlike what we've heard accounts from you, and I believe from the district attorney and possibly the FBI, that your weapons were not drawn. None of your the Joint Terrorism Task Force members, FBI or police, had their weapons drawn until they were approached in an aggressive manner with a knife right. by uh, Usama Rahim. He says one of the police officers had a weapon drawn prior to that. Is there any truth Jim, to that as far as you know? Tim, you've seen the video i seen. Clearly those officers approaching um, were unarmed. They, they walked up uh, very nonchalantly up to him and they, they, were, they clearly had no video. I think uh, one of the officers later seen running might have his hand on his hip, but clearly unless, you know, all the videos we've seen uh, show that we, we didn't draw our weapons too confronted with deadly force. But will you, even if it's only a few seconds, as you say, Commissioner, will you release the additional sure. few I mean, seconds? Is yeah, I mean, all, all it is, I think uh, the DA, just because we had so many people there, we just cut it down to the potent part, but there is nothing to see, there's nothing being hidden here. Do you agree with uh, many observers, including uh, uh, the Imam and I believe other members of the family, that, that and, and some of the community leaders who saw the video on the first day that you showed it, do you agree that it is not clear from that video as to whether or not Rahim was brandishing right. a and knife? Jim, we never said uh, whether it was, uh, you know, the weapons we made clear weren't in view. Mm. All we wanted out there and disputed was the fact that there was allegations made that he was waiting at the bus stop and that we confronted him and shot him in the back. I think what this video shows is our officers clearly were being uh, put in fear. It, a threat was coming after them. When you've seen five grown officers backtracking 15 to 20 yards by one individual, you can, uh, you can, you can infer that obviously he has a weapon. We never, and we've said it wasn't clear, we never said we've seen the weapons, but I think everybody can draw, draw their own conclusions here that the officers were getting hit with a threat here and they had to respond. The Imam said he would like to meet with you. Will you meet with him? I'd love to meet with him. He seems like a great guy and you know, when I Spent heard a that- a time I, in Boston. Yeah, and then when I heard that, I said, shame on me, I should, probably should have outreached earlier, but I know the DA, I know uh, they've been busy burying their loved one, but. 
Jim, he, you know, again, uh, I, I like to sit down. I know he has some, some questions, and I'd love to answer them the best I can without, uh, you know, hurting the investigation. You said uh, today at the press conference in response to a question about why you didn't use less, your men didn't use less force, or the FBI's men uh, either shoot at a different part of the bottle, use tasers. You said you don't carry, your men right. don't, and women don't carry tasers. Why not? Well, we've debated it, uh, Jim. You know, I've heard some horror cases of tasers. You know, um, we, we have the batons, we have the pepper spray, we have our, um, you know, obviously our guns. You know, I just don't see the need. Uh, you know, maybe something like this, but, you know. He'd the, be alive. Yeah, well, Jim, I, I think you're talking about a guy who's six foot here, 270 pounds, running with a foot long knife. I, I mean, the threat was eminent there. And, you know, we're going to look into tasers, but if you remember back to Victoria Snellgrove, sure. you know, and, and, and introducing a new weapon, yeah. um, you, know, uh, you know, there's some dangers. There's, there has to be a lot of community outreach. Some community has expressed reservations about intro introducing a new weapon. So it's not as easy as you think. You know, you, I know you a little bit. I know you enough to know you're thinking about your job and your work 24-7. There's a story in the Globe today. A lot of us have been thinking about before it was in the Globe. Why are so many of these alleged terrorists and some convicted terrorists, Sarnayevs, Tariq Mahana, Rahim now, allegedly. Right. Do you say, why so much Boston inspired or Boston bred or Boston something? Do you ask yourself that question? Yeah, I do. You know, but you got to think it's because of the international, uh, you know, the community we have, the number of great colleges and all the international students. Uh -huh. I would think, you know, it's a melting pot for everybody. And we got a great city. We've got a great community. And I think people come here. And uh, I like to think it's because how good the city is. But unfortunately, we recognize that it's been a little bit of a uh, a hot spot for us. We only have 45 seconds left here. Uh, uh, crimes that involve violence directed at little kids just put all of us sure. over the edge, including you. I know the victim of the hit and run, you've, you have a suspect. Are we any closer to getting the person who shot and could have seriously injured but didn't, that little seven-year-old boy a week or so ago? Well, we haven't forgot about it. You know, I get almost daily updates on it. I can tell you, uh, the unit that's investigating is all out going for that because we can't tolerate, obviously, a seven-year-old getting shot. Very much like we can't tolerate an eight-year-old and a uh, cousin playing on the streets of Mattapan getting run down by an Over individual weekend, who, yeah. who flees the scene uh, and leaves them laying there for dead. That, that type of stuff makes us all sick. And we're glad we got him, and we're working hard to get whoever shot that seven-year-old. Good luck to you in that. Uh, Commissioner Evans, thank you so much for thank your time. You.